Investors. My name is Jesse Meekum from YNAB. It stands for You Need a Budget. Yes, you do. Welcome to another Whiteboard Wednesday. We are continuing our trek through the book I wrote a while ago called Invest Like a Pro! Exclamation point. And uh, if you don't want to read the book, then you can just watch these videos and you'll get a pretty good synopsis. The book is on Amazon. It's uh, 99 cents priced at the lowest they will possibly let me price it. Um, we talked last time about we know we want to invest to build wealth and we know that we invest for growth, right? Growth uh, can be influenced by the amount we set aside to grow, by the time we have to wait for the investment to grow, and by the rate of return of the investment. In other words, kind of intrinsically the rate of growth. So your nest egg is influenced by the amount, by the time you have, and then obviously by the rate of growth. When you look at uh, rate of return, we'll call it, we might call it a few different things, but rate of return, the underlying value of the asset can increase, and that is a positive, so I wrote it in blue. Uh, if you buy your house for $200,000 and in four years it's worth $220,000, then the value has gone up. That's growth. Your rate of return is made up partially by just the amount that someone else is willing to pay for that asset. That is the only positive thing that affects your rate of return. Everything else is a drag on your rate of return. So when someone says, like I did last week, oh, and then assume you have 8%, you can always, well, you just want to make sure that you have clarity around what that rate of return actually looks like. Is it a rate of return not including costs, not including taxes, not including inflation, things like that. What you want to get for a really good solid analysis is the net after all things return. And you get that by looking at all the other negatives that can affect it. Really quickly, value, positive, cool. Taxes, if you have to pay taxes on the growth, that affects your rate of return. So if your rate normally would be 10%, but your marginal rate of return, or your marginal tax rate is 30%, then your rate of return is actually 7%. It's not 10, it's seven, right? Inflation, you know how your grandpa would say like, hey, when I was a kid for 25 cents, I could ride the bus both ways, get a candy bar, go to a movie, come back all for a quarter. You can't do that now. A dollar doesn't buy what it used to, things like that. So inflation is a drag. When you'd say, oh, we our investments return 10%. Well, if the value of a dollar decreased by 4%, then your actual investment value is 10 minus 4%, 6%. Do you have to pay taxes on that? Yeah, you know, it keeps going. Transaction fees. A lot of times with brokers or if you're investing in some other way, you have to pay per transaction. Mutual funds do this still. They'll, they'll be called load feeds and fees and things like that. Or if you're just doing standard stock trading, it'll be like seven bucks a trade or five bucks a trade or whatever. There are fees potentially to transact and you want to avoid those as much as possible. You also have investment fees. Those are covering things like what you'd normally see called an expense ratio when you're looking at a mutual fund. And you want the expense ratio to be as low as possible, all else equal. You also have advisor fees. If you are paying your uncle, you shouldn't. No, I'm, I'm sorry, uncle, but Advisors will charge what is called an assets under management fee, and it can range all over the board. If you're investing in a hedge fund, it can be pretty steep. Uh, if you're investing with your uncle, maybe he's cutting you a break, and it's only 50 basis points, which is like half a percent, right? So when you're looking at an advisor, there's a little bit of a caveat here. I do say it's a negative, um, and I used to take a really hard line approach to this. There are there is a place for advisors to keep people sane, to keep emotion out of the investing realm, to make sure that people's, that they're really taking a holistic view of their whole financial picture. Um, as you'll see as we go through these videos, or if you've already read the book, you'll see that I'm not a huge fan of thinking that you can pick the advisor that would pick the mutual fund, that has the manager that can pick the stocks that will actually beat the market. We'll get into all that later. So I don't believe advisors are necessarily useful uh, for helping you invest, only in helping you keep your emotions in check and in helping you take a holistic view of your entire financial picture. So it is definitely, if they have an assets under management fee, that is a drag on your rate of return. Finally, you have kind of a separate bucket because I know a lot of us are in 401k, 403b, thrift savings plan if you're in the military or government, and that is essentially a black box of fees. Uh, at YNAB, if you work for us, you end up with a 
pretty much the best 401k you can possibly imagine, but most companies are not like us and they don't take the time. They end up just taking something out of the box and a lot of the 401k providers see that as an opportunity to charge exorbitant fees. We will go into how that can affect your growth. Just let me say this. If you project out, hey, we're going to have 12% return on this money, therefore I only need to set aside 200 bucks a month, if you better make darn sure you understand exactly where that 12% is coming from. When you look at historical returns of investments in different asset classes and then you start taking taxes, inflation, transaction fees, investment fees, you start taking all those into account, that rate of return can become a lot smaller, a lot, quick, uh, a lot quicker. And that means that the amount that you're required to invest may actually be quite a bit higher than you thought in order to reach you know, your ultimate nest egg goal. So today, just to do a quick recap, we talked about growth last week and your, your nest egg grows faster with more money, uh, it grows larger with more time, and it grows larger obviously with a higher rate of return. The only positive to a rate of return is the value of the asset increasing, what someone else is willing to pay for it, and then finally, you have all of these negatives, taxes, inflation, transaction fees, investment fees, advisor fees, 401k black box fees. Be aware of all of them. Don't worry, I will show you as we move forward how to focus on what you can control and kind of forget the rest and uh, basically beat, uh, well, how should I put this? Let's pause and kind of slow down. You will do better than most if you follow simple advice and basically do less. I will see you guys next week.